Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Today's webinar is Car Seat Manufacturer Update, CLEC today, and again, brought to you by State Farm and Safe Kids. So thanks again for being with us. So again, just a reminder that only the person that's registered for the webinar and is logged in will get the credit for watching the webinar. So if you are watching with friends, that is not a problem. Um, we just need you to quickly organize an in-person session. Just designate a lead, get a sign-in sheet, and then you will add the CEU as an in-person session instead of a webinar. Also, Carrie will be adding into the chat box the handouts for today's webinar, as well as watch for a email that will come to you not until tomorrow afternoon. So it will not come to you right away. It will come tomorrow afternoon. Follow-up email that will have the event ID on that email, as well as also the link of the handouts for today. So as always, we have objectives for our webinar. Um, today, we're going to identify the primary differences between the Ling and the Lingo. We're going to be able to describe how to adjust the recline of the Ling. We're going to recognize important areas to check when completing a virtual check with the CLEC FUMF or the FLOW convertible seat. And then also, we're going to understand the varied levels of manufacturer support available to caregivers and technicians, and again, very importantly, how to access them. So we're very excited today to have Trudy Slatt on the call with us. She is the CLEC CPS advocate. Trudy was also a previous board member of the CPS Association of Canada, as well as an instructor trainer from Edmonton. Trudy speaks at many conferences, um, providing the guidance and the support for parents, caregivers, and fellow technicians. Trudy is a mom of three. She's been involved in the field for over 13 years, spending lots of her time thinking about practicing and sharing the best methods to keep those little ones safe. So we're so excited to have you with us today, Trudy. And with that, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, good afternoon and good morning to everybody. It's great to be here with everyone and I hope you enjoy today's webinar. Um, so we're going to start off just by talking a little bit about CLEC and who we are. I know some of you have heard of us and maybe we're brand new for some of you. So um, I'll just get you to hop to the next slide there, please. Perfect. Um, so CLEC is a Canadian company. We're based out of Toronto, Ontario. Our roots are from a large automotive supplier, but we are a smaller family-owned Canadian company. Our family of products started out with boosters. Auto came first, for those of you who've been around a long time and remember the name, um, followed by Oli, Aussie, and Uber. We entered the convertible seat market with the FUNF at the end of 2012 and introduced the Flow in 2014. Last year, we introduced Ling, and this year brought with it our newest member, member of the family, Lingo. So without further ado, we'll hop right on to the next slide. So the information in this webinar is current as of today. Information can change with time, so please keep in mind that while we have aimed to provide up-to-date and accurate information, it's always good practice to read the manual that came with the seat in front of you. Contact information can be found at the end of this presentation for both myself and customer service. If any questions come up after today, please feel free to reach out to us and we will be happy to assist. Please note that all limits and installation information throughout this presentation is US specific. If we have anyone joining us from Canada, please keep in mind that there are differences between US and Canadian standards and this can result in different installation instructions. So Ling versus Lingo, um, and this slide is kind of just a brief summary highlighting the big differences between the two of them. Um, Ling and Lingo have a lot of features in common. They actually have more things in common than they have different. So between the two of them, the things they have in common are the height and weight limits, and we will get into the specific specifics of that in future slides. 
they share the same ex expiration, the same stroller compatibility, fit to child, um, they're recyclable through us, and certified for use on aircraft, as well as having a one plus two year extended warranty when registered online. We will cover all of the specifics for those as we get further into the webinar. And for now, we're just gonna focus on what makes Lingo different. So the main difference between them is that Ling comes with a stay in car base and may only be installed with the vehicle belt when installing the carrier without the base. Lingo may be installed using either latch or the vehicle belt when installing it in the vehicle. So Lingo's limits are four to 35 pounds um, and up to 32 inches. The width is 16.9 inches at its widest point. So that's the outer edge of one side of the handle to the outer edge of the other side of the handle. It has three harness heights and we do require that the handle be upright in the vehicle. Now Lingo is a baseless installation only and you can use either latch or the vehicle belt. Um, we do have a preference for using the European belt installation method over the latch installation method. Um, in terms of fit, we do require that there be at least one inch of space above the top of an infant's head when they're using Lingo. And based on growth charts, 97% of kids will be within the height and weight limits of the Lingo at their first birthday. And when it comes to the limits of the Lingo, and this applies for Ling as well, once a child has reached one of the limits, it would be time to move them to a rear-facing convertible such as the Foont for Flow which will allow them to remain rear facing longer. So European belt path, um, in essence, you can see it in the photo here, it has the lap portion of the belt going through the blue lap belt guides and then the shoulder portion of the belt wraps around behind. This is the preferred method of installation because the shoulder belt wrapping around behind the carrier is controlling and reducing downward rotation. There is a color-coded belt path, so you'll see the blue uh, lap belt guides on the side, and the guide at the back of the seat is also blue. Uh, now, if you were to be installing using a Ford inflatable belt, you would follow the lap only instructions and not use the European belt routing, so you would leave the inflatable portion of the belt against the vehicle seat back. If the vehicle has an automatic locking retractor, we do want the shoulder belt pulled out all the way to switch it to the ALR mode. Lingo is approved for use on aircraft. Just follow the lap only belt installation instructions that are found in the manual. And moving on to the latch bin. Um, so this is part of what makes Lingo unique. So the latch belt is stored in the latch bin that's located at the back of the carrier. You can see in this slide the image of where the latch bin is located and what it looks like when you've opened up the door. That door opens up just by pressing down on a little tab and then pulling it forward. It just rotates down. Um, so this latch bin allows for Lingo to be installed with latch in dedicated latch seating positions with ha which have standard 11 inch spacing. Borrowing in seating positions with larger than the standard spacing is not allowed. So if it's a dedicated position, it's always going to have that standard 11 inch spacing. Um, and if in doubt, you're always welcome just to reach out to me. Um, and that's something we can always help out with. The latch bin is connected to the carrier by two T20 torque screws. So that's, it, it kind of looks almost like a star head and it may be removed if a parent prefers to install with the vehicle belt and wants to reduce the carrier's weight. Lingo comes with a small tool that may be used to remove the latch bin, but a standard T20 Torx screwdriver may also be used if the tool is unavailable. So looking at the latch installation, um, this picture was taken in a 2015 Subaru Legacy. Um, I know we probably have some detail oriented folks on the call, so you might notice some pinkish colored flap near the bottom of the picture. That is not part of the lingo, but rather is the backing of the flap that covers the lower anchors in this vehicle. So you'll notice on the side of the carrier that there's a blue line. That blue line is going to be level to ground when you've installed the lingo in a vehicle and you're using the same line, whether you're using a latch installation or a vehicle belt installation. The latch installation has premium push-on connectors 
and they are handed, which means that they do have to be routed correctly. The adjuster will always be on the child's left when properly routed, so closest to the passenger side of the vehicle. The tether or the pigtail, um, the little thin strip of webbing that connects the latch belt to the carrier itself, will always be on the child's right. Um, you'll close the latch bin door after you remove the latch belt from storage, and there is a space for that little pigtail to sit in, but if it's not lined up perfectly, the door will still go closed. Latch routing uses the same blue guides as the lap portion of the vehicle belt, and it's pretty much just connect your lower anchors and tighten it in at the correct angle, so it's a pretty straightforward installation. And uh, do we have any questions about lingo before we move on to wing? Hi, Trudy. Uh, we do have one question. What seats are approved for inflatable seatbelts? So all of our seats are approved for use with Ford and Lincoln inflatable belts. So Mercury, uh, sorry, not Mercury, Mercedes <laughs> inflatable belts are not approved for use with Clec products because we have not been able to test them. Um, for Ling and Lingo, the installation instructions are found in the car seat manual. For Funf and Flow, we do have the inflatable belt instructions available online, so that's in the support section of our website. And then for Uber and Ollie and Ozzy, you would just follow the regular instructions. Great, thank you. If anybody has questions, please do um, put them in the Q&A box. Um, we do have one more question that was just entered before we move on. Mark wants to know, what is the purpose of manufacturing carriers without a base? Um, so that's a great question. Thank you so much for asking that, Mark. Um, we had a lot of feedback coming in um, from families who lived in places like New York um, or other large areas where subways and transit or Ubers and taxis are the primary method of getting around. And we also were sometimes getting requests for families who were just, they were going overseas, they weren't necessarily going to be using a base, but they planned to travel a lot. And so this gives families the option to um, get a seat without the base, so they're not paying for a component that they're not going to use. And it also is a lower price point in terms of getting a clock seat. Great, thank you. And I know one thing that I have had in the way of feedback come in from customers, like particularly if they travel to Europe, um, they like being able to take a carrier that they can install using Latch. Um, so that's something that has come up and I think it's a nice option for parents um, and sometimes also if families are conscious about their plastic consumption just having less plastic that they're buying it still gives them the convenience of a carrier and that good fit to a newborn um, without having the plastic that's in the base. Actually Trudy if you don't mind we have two more quick questions and then we'll kind of continue we will have more Q&A uh, throughout and at the end. Um, how much Kristen wants to know how much heavier is the Ling than a normal infant seat? I know there's a lot of variation. Can you give the um, the carrier weight? For sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing she's probably asking about the Lingo versus the oh, Ling. Oh, sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so the Lingo, if the latch bin is on, is about 10 pounds. Um, if the latch bin is removed, then it weighs the same amount as the Ling, which is about 9 pounds. So it's actually... I mean, 10 pounds is a little bit heavier than average. Nine pounds is on the lighter side, not as light as some, but it's not heavy. Um, so we, you know, if a family is looking at the weight, then we would probably suggest removing the latch bin and they can install using the lap shoulder belt or a lap belt if that's what's in their vehicle. All of the warning labels are positioned so that everything is on the seat, whether they have the latch bin on or whether they have it off. Um, so it's, we totally allow them to take off the latch bin, and if they want to do that, they can do that, no problem. Great. So I just want to remind everybody that they can fling, see what I did there, fling a question at us by putting it in the Q&A box, and we will be able to answer them throughout or at the end. As always, if we are not able to answer your question, we will have contact information at the end. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie. So moving on to Ling, you'll see that a lot of these specs look exactly like what you saw for Lingo. Um, the big difference that I'm going to call out on this slide is the seven position adjustable recline for the base. 
So Ling comes with the Klet car seat base and that's a stay in car base. It does have a load leg on it and we'll go into more details on the load leg in a little bit. The other major difference that is between Ling and Lingo is that when you are using the load leg with Ling, we do allow the top of the child's head to be even with the top of the seat pad, so the inner seat shell of the carrier. And that's just because there's really not any rotation when the load leg is in use, so we can allow the child to be a little bit taller and still fit properly. So moving on to the specifics of the base, um, rigid latch, the awesome thing for those of you who haven't had a chance to play with rigid latch in the past, um, and I just noticed my slide says rigid UAS, that's the Canadian term. Um, so rigid latch are the metal bars that you see extending from the base into the vehicle seat bite and connecting onto the vehicle's lower anchors. Um, that is a standard spacing from vehicle to vehicle. So a common question that comes up is how do I know the rigid latch is going to fit in my vehicle? If you're putting it in a standard dedicated latch position, it will fit. And the great thing about that is that you don't get that accidental borrowing that families sometimes do where they want to put the seat in the middle and just presume they can borrow from the outer position. So it kind of eliminates a very common misuse. And um, on the top of the base, kind of to the right of the picture, you can see the edge of a white tab. That is the latch adjustment tab and it controls the rigid latch connectors. So you toggle that tab and you hold it and then you pull out on the corresponding latch connector to extend it all the way. And then you repeat on the other side. Once both of them are fully extended, it's locked out and that allows you to push the connectors onto the vehicle's lower anchors. Then you toggle those same tabs again and you start to slide the base towards the vehicle seat back. And once it has started to move towards the vehicle seat back, you can release those tabs. And then there's a ratcheting mechanism that you can actually use to assist with getting a tight fit. So you're really just kind of pushing the base back and you'll kind of hear a click click sound and you're just snugging the base right up to the vehicle seat back. So it gives a nice tight fit. Um, the red button on top of each connector um, is used to uninstall the base. And I apologize, this slide um, has an error on it because this <laughs> has, it's a Canadian slide that I missed updating. And so that must use load leg after 22 pounds is a Canadian only requirement. That is not correct for the US. So in the US, the load leg is not required at any time. We do recommend that it be used because it provides a substantial safety benefit, um, but it is not required in the US. So moving on to the vehicle belt installation, there is a belt tensioning arm. The belt tensioning arm is required to be used with all vehicle belt installations. It assists with getting a tight installation by removing excess slack from the vehicle belt. And yes, it is a true lock off. Um, in order to open the belt tensioning arm, the panel must first be pressed down at um, kind of the center front part. So right by the vehicle seat back, just above the white handle, press down and then squeeze the white handle. And then you can rotate the belt tensioning arm up and out of the way. Both the lap and shoulder portions of the belt get routed through the belt guides. Um, the lock indicators on the top turn from red to green when, the, when it's closed properly. So if you were to see red, that would be an indicator that it is not closed properly. Only remove the excess slack when closing the panel. You don't need to tighten it 100% because it's going to take a lot of the slack out of the belt for you when it goes closed. When uninstalling, we do recommend unbuckling the vehicle belt before opening the belt tensioner. And that last bullet there, I, my apologies, that is, again, the Canadian bullet. So if there's any confusion around that point, please feel re free to reach out to me or pop your question in the question box right now. Um, but the load leg is not required in the U.S. It is recommended but never required in the U.S. So here we have just a short video. It's going to show you a side-by-side -side crash test. Um, both of these are 
passing tests. So one is with the load leg and one is without the load leg in use. And this is just to really give you an idea of why would I use the load leg? It's optional. I know you recommend it, but why should I use it? This video kind of shows more than what words can say. So if you want to go ahead and play it, Stephanie. So how do you use the load leg and how do you know when it's being properly used? Um, you can see in the photo on this slide right here um, that the indicator at the bottom of the load leg toggles to fully green when it's properly used. Um, we do allow the back of the base to lift up a small amount. So what the instructions say is to use the first locking position that results in the indicator being green. So you wouldn't want to lift it up, you know, an extra inch or two further. But as long as it's the first lock position that turns that indicator green, then you're good. Um, it is designed to work in center seating positions, even if they have humps. Um, the load leg is quite short at its shortest adjustment position. Um, I have found a couple of vehicles where if the hump is sitting basically right at the level of the vehicle seat, then the load leg doesn't work. But the vast majority, it does work with humps. Um, we do want the load leg to be adjusted before adjusting the recline. And the reason for that is, is that if you get a little bit of a lift from the load leg, you want that lift to happen before you've adjusted the recline. And this is just a short video showing how to adjust the load leg. To extend the load leg, pull out on the load leg adjustment handle and hold it. Then use your other hand to extend the load leg until it contacts your vehicle floor. Once it's in contact, pull up slightly to lock the load leg into place. The load leg pressure indicator will turn from red to fully green when there is proper contact between the vehicle floor and the load leg. And this video is an example of the videos that make up our online video manual to help caregivers with correctly installing and using their seat. Um, so we will have, um, we've got some a dedicated slide to the varied levels of support that we have available. Um, but our video installation manual is one of the big caregiver supports that we have out there. And it's also accessible to technicians and anybody who wants to watch it. Um, so the angle adjustment, so this is kind of where the magic, some of the magic happens in the Ling base. I'm sure most of us have installed a car seat in the vehicle and you go to check the recline and then you're like, oh, oops, not the right recline and you have to uninstall and reinstall the base. The angle adjustment in the Ling takes all of that away because you're actually adjusting the recline after. Uh, you've completed the installation. So there's seven different positions um, that the recline sled adjusts to and you're seeing kind of the center part of the seat there is the recline sled and that white handle on the left side of the picture is what you squeeze in order to rotate the recline sled and then that bubble that you can see kind of centered in the picture is where the recline indicator is and on this picture was actually taken on a pre-production base, but on the bases that families have, there's a sticker that shows a four to 11 pound range, an 11 to 35 pound range if they can't sit unassisted, and then a 22 to 35 pound range. And we do allow them to keep the bubble in that 11 to 35 pound range the entire time that they're using the seat if they prefer to keep it more reclined. Um, and then on the next slide, there's just a GIF that kind of illustrates the range of recline. So obviously you would never be able to adjust the recline once the carrier is on the base, but that um, animation is just showing the range of how much it shifts. So there's actually 15 degrees, um, which allows you to get a newborn recline in pretty much every vehicle we've tested it in. Um, 
so the recline changes based on the recline sled. We did update the recline indicator in mid-2019, um, and that's with the weights that I was just describing. So if someone has an original wing base and they have the original weight cutoffs, they can always contact us for clarification because we do allow them to keep their, their heavier, younger child more reclined if needed. Um, something that I want to call out on this slide is that pool noodles or rolled towels are not allowed to increase the recline. As of yet, we have not found a vehicle where the built-in recline is not sufficient. So if you happen to run into that, um, that's the CPST email that's right there. Um, those emails go straight to me and you're welcome to forward pictures and information. And if you ever ran into it, we would um, review it at that time. But at this point, we haven't run into it yet. So we're inclined to think we're probably not going to run into it. So European belt path, um, same deal as with the lingo, um, same recline indicator is on the ling in the baseless installation as with the lingo, so it's the same blue line. Um, ling is approved for use on aircraft in baseless mode only, so you cannot install the ling's base on an airplane. Um, if you were flying with the ling, you would need to either um, check the base, like pack it up well in your luggage or carry it on or just plan to install it baseless while you were traveling. So moving on to fit to child, and this information applies to both Ling and Lingo because the carrier is identical between the two of them. So there's a two-stage infant insert, and the newborn stage is designed to protect the airway. So if you can kind of see in the picture, the bottom portion that goes underneath the child lifts them up, and there's also a little bit of extra padding behind the back. And so what that's going to do is result in a natural kind of head tipping back position. And so that's gonna help with keeping the airway open. The headrest is optional um, once you've removed that bottom insert, but it has to be used if you're using the bottom insert. The full insert is required until 11 pounds and the shoulders are even with the bottom slots. The headrest provides additional side impact protection, so we do recommend continuing to use it even once the bottom insert is out. It's just optional once the bottom insert is out. So this next slide is kind of a tips and tricks slide. Um, so if you are looking at this little one in the seat, I want everyone to kind of just formulate an idea in their head of where you think the harness should sit on a newborn. Um, the little one in this picture was nine pounds and I believe she was six weeks old when uh, this picture was taken. Um, so harness geometry is a term that's used to describe the place on the body that the harness webbing sits on an infant or child. It's something that varies from seat to seat and even from child to child. And it can also change as inserts are added or removed or as a child grows. Um, so now that you guys have all had a chance to kind of think of what do you think of the fit and why, um, we'll uh, go through a few points. Um, so the harness hip straps sometimes are across the thighs on a newborn and you can see with this little one, the, the harness straps are not quite touching the knees, but they're kind of moving towards the knees. So they're not up right on the hips like you sometimes see with some seats. And that's a, a normal fit. What's important is to make sure that the child hasn't pulled their knees up underneath the strap. So if you need to make sure that you teach the parents to straighten out the child's legs and that the harness is snug across the legs. So wherever it's sitting, um, babies grow really fast. So if you have a child who is quite short in the legs, that's when you tend to see the fit where the straps are kind of sitting closer to the knees. Um, and if you have any questions about this, it's something that you're absolutely welcome to take some pictures and send it to the CPST email. Um, the newborn support cushion may continue to be used with the top harness slots for infants up to 11 pounds. So if you have a super tall torsoed newborn and they need to move up to the top slots, but they still need that bottom insert for best positioning, you can keep that bottom insert in. Do we have any questions about child fit, Carrie, before we move on to some of the, the other details? Um, we actually have a, a bunch of questions. Thank you for everybody using the Q&A box. 
Um, some are related to child fit and some are other. Um, we did have a couple of questions about the retainer clip. Um, uh, they, uh, Judy says that her client did receive a replacement retainer clip, but the movement when closed is still very difficult. Um, you know, she was able to recommend to the client that they position the clip and then close it, but she's wondering if you have any, if that was a new change. So in the, it sounds like her client probably has an original ling or a ling that was made in the first six months anyways. There's actually been a few changes that we've made to the chest clip based on consumer feedback. And one of the one of the feedback that we got early on was that it was difficult to raise up. So the chest clip that we've been using since I want to say November 2019 slides easier. So if we sent out the replacement prior to November, then you could have a consumer or a customer just reach out to customer service and we would just ship them out a replacement chest clip. Um, we do suggest raising it prior to fastening it as a tip that makes it easier to get it in position. Um, but we do have the replacements available and we would just need a receipt from the customer and their seat state of manufacture and serial number and then we would ship it out for free. Great, thank you. Uh, Tracy wants to know if the infant insert can be used past 11 pounds if that is preferred by the, by the uh, caregiver. So the answer to that is yes and no. It depends on the child's fit. So if the child still needs to use the middle set of harness slots, if that's the correct height for the child, then yes, they can continue using the full insert past 11 pounds. But if the height of the child is requiring that they need the top set of slots and the child is over 11 pounds, then at 11 pounds, that bottom insert has to come out. Okay. Um, we did have a couple of, of more questions. Um, I, I believe we do have time to put them in here. Um, there was a question, and I can't find it now, it was in the, in the chat box, not the other, about um, do you have to take the latch compartment out if you're using it with the base? For lingo, I'm lingo. assuming. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So if you are installing, so if you have a lingo and you decide to purchase a base separately, then you would have to remove the latch bin in order to use the carrier on the ling base. And that is actually located right inside the lingo manual itself. So there's no chance of them missing that. Um, the carrier also would not lock onto a base with the latch bin on because it's covering one of the base attachment bars. So if they didn't read the manual and they decided to just try to put it onto a base, they would find the carrier just sat up above the base and the bases themselves have a indicator at the back and it's coming up in just a few slides that you can see when the carrier is properly connected to the base and when it isn't. So that handle would have red visible if they had not removed the latch bin. So there's a few places where there would be cues, both visual and the obvious, like my seat's not attached, um, to make them go something's not right and either check their manual or reach out to customer service. Okay, we actually had um, two people ask about if pool noodles are allowed um, if you're using the Ling or Lingo uh, without a base. So yes, we do allow roll towels or pool noodles for the baseless installation. What I have found with the baseless installations that I've done is that it's not necessary to use a roll towel or pool noodle. Um, the amount of the carrier that contacts the vehicle seat is significant enough that it's very stable. And I've found just positioning it with the line level and then tightening it in at that angle has worked in all of the vehicles I've tested it in so far. But if a parent just found it easier or they just wanted to do that, we do allow it. And that is in the manual as well. Okay. Um, actually, Donna and Carlos both had some questions about the load leg. And um, it, the first thing is, have you uh, found a problem with having the correct angle and using the load leg in cars with different seat, like different vehicle seat shapes? To this point, we have not. Now that's not to say it's never going to come up because I try to say never say never. Um, but the design of the recline sled and the way the recline angle is adjusted is such that the very minimal amount the load leg raises the base has not caused any problems in any of the vehicles that I've seen it in. 
And in follow-up, does the load leg have to be on a flat vehicle bottom? So um, a foot well as opposed to a hump. That was from Donna. So I would need to see it because the actual contact point of the load leg is about three inches. So in the vehicles that I've seen, there's always been a way for the load leg to be flat. So the biggest thing that I would want to see is, is the indicator green and is the load leg stable. Um, there is a little bit of front to back pivot, if you will. So like when I say front to back, I'm talking towards the front of the vehicle. So while the preference is to have the load leg kind of straight down, in vehicles where you have a slightly angled floor, you sometimes do find that the load leg is slightly tilted a little bit towards the front of the vehicle. And we're talking like maybe three to five degrees, like not a huge amount. Um, but that's something where I would, you know, encourage pictures and reaching out to the CPST email um, if you're not sure, because chances are it is okay, but I would much rather get the question in and say, yes, this is okay, then have uh, a family believe that they couldn't use the load leg. Okay. Um, uh, uh, there was a question from Denise about the crash video that you showed, and she's wondering if it was a US sled test, and if so, is it the current one or the one that NHTSA has, has proposed? That would be the current one. So yes, that would be a US crash test. Um, so that's the US test bench. And it would be the current one um, because that that video was actually done before we released the wing. Um, so that was some of our early testing, basically. Okay. Um, just a couple more questions. Um, Kristen wants to know if you can secure the Ling and Lingo with both the lower anchor and the seatbelt, or do you just need one at a time? So it would be just one or the other. Um, and that is found in both of the manuals. Um, if you were to try and use both the rigid latch and the vehicle belt with the Ling base, we have actually had people break their bases because it has over tensioned the belt, um, like the way the belt tensioner goes closed. Um, when you have the rigid latch in use, it doesn't compress down into the vehicle seat the way it normally would. Um, so it can damage, it can actually break the car seat base. So never never use both um, and the same would apply for lingo we've only tested it with one or the other so we would advise against using both okay um, maybe a couple more questions and I'll let you continue we should still have more time at the end um, it did sound like you said that the um, the ling base can be used with the lingo is that correct yes so the ling base is compatible with the lingo provided that the latch bin is removed and that is located in the Lingo manual. And if it's not already in a FAQ on our support site, then that's something that I'll make sure gets added because it's probably is a pretty common question, but it is in the Lingo manual itself. Okay. Um, Allison wants to know if the crotch and shoulder, strat, uh, shoulder pads are required or if they are optional and you can take them off. So the shoulder harness covers are optional. Um, and we do have in the manual that if they are preventing raising the chest clip so that it's even with the armpit to remove them. Um, in terms of the buckle pad at the crotch strap, that is always going to be there because it's actually stitched right onto the cover itself. Okay, well, why don't we um, continue? I wanna make sure that we have time with your presentation. And if anybody out there has questions, they can just type them in the Q&A box. We'd prefer that to chat because it helps us keep them organized. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, Carrie. Um, so I'm gonna kind of zoom through the canopy. The canopy is one of those um, convenience features. It's actually a really large canopy. Um, it's got three positions. So the first two positions are um, what you're used to on most carriers. And then the third position is actually um, accessed by opening up a zipper, which gives almost full coverage. The peekaboo window at the back has two little magnets so you can flip it to different amounts to provide different exposure um, and that lets you just see the baby. The carrier itself has a two-piece shell for airflow and the cover is removable and machine washable. Um, right now we have one jersey knit color available, we have two tailored Krypton colors available and two merino wool colors available and that's for Ling. Lingo does have slightly different colors available. And this is just showing the release. So on 
the stroller, um, it's just a one hand release. It's the white handle that you see at the back of that photo. And then on the base, it is a two step process. So you're using one hand, you're going to toggle the smaller piece that's to the left of the photo with your thumb, hold it, and then use your fingers to pull out on the larger handle that you see where the little red is raised there. Um, when the carrier is properly connected to the base, that handle will be flush and there is going to be no red visible at all. And there are warnings in the manual and I believe on the base stickers itself, um, saying to always make sure that that handle is flush when the carrier is on the base. So that's what I was referring to when I mentioned a little bit ago that there's some visual indicators if someone tried to put the carrier on the base and they had the latch bin on for their lingo, it just wouldn't go on and that handle would stay sticking out. And three across in most vehicles, this is something that we're quite proud of and we market our seats around. Um, Foot, Flow, Ling and Lingo are all the exact same maximum width. So that's 16.9 inches at its widest point. Um, of course, you can't guarantee that you can fit three across in every vehicle, but a narrower seat does make it easier to fit three across. So it's a nice option to have um, if you have a smaller vehicle and you're trying to get three across. And just a little bit more information about our one plus two year extended warranty. Um, so the one year warranty is our standard warranty. And a few years ago, we added in the plus two year extended warranty. Part of the goal in doing that was to encourage families to register their seat um, and it also gives them longer coverage as well. Um, all of our products are available in a 100% merino wool cover um, for Ling, Lingo, Foot, Flow and Uber. So the merino wool is a fabric that has natural properties that are flame retardant so we do not add any extra flame retardants to the merino wool covers but they still meet all of the federally re required flame retardant standards. So something that's come up recently on social media is people thinking that there's no protection in the merino wool covers and that if they were to have like a car fire, their car seat is just gonna burst into flames. Um, that is not the case at all. The merino wool covers still meet those federally, federally required flammability standards but they meet it because of the natural properties of the wool. So we don't have to add any, any flame retardants to the fabric because of the wool's properties. So moving on to our convertible seats, booster seats and accessories. Um, the Flow and the Foomph, I'm sure some of you are quite familiar with them. So this is just kind of a quick overview of the two. Again, they have the same weight limits for rear facing and for forward facing. The biggest difference between Funf and Flow is going to be with the Funf, you have the rigid latch. Um, that does make Funf a heavier seat. So you'll notice in the bullets there that at 35 pounds, we allow latch plus vehicle belt together for a forward facing installation. And that's something unique to the Funf. For Flow, when they hit the latch weight limit, we have them just switch to using the vehicle belt. Both Flow and Funf feature built-in crumple zones for forward-facing children, and that basically is absorbing some of the energy of the collision, and it's giving them a longer period of time to stop moving, and that reduces the force that they feel. So when we do our crash testing with Funf and Flow, the end result is that the forward facing forces are very similar actually to our rear facing tests and that's just because of the built in energy management. So if a family is trying to figure out, you know, which should I get, should I get a flow or should I get a foomph, the first thing to consider is always going to be, are they going to be able to use latch? Um, if they're trying to do three across, chances are most of those seats are going to be installed using the vehicle belt and that would kind of mean that the flow is probably going to be the better choice for them just because they'll have the benefit of the built-in crumple zone whether they've installed using the vehicle belt or the seat belt. In order to have that full benefit of the built-in crumple zone with the foomph you do have to have the rigid latch in use. Um, both flow and foomph have a minimum age 2 recommendation so it's not a hard requirement, but if a customer was to contact our customer service team, we do strongly recommend that they keep children rear facing to at least stage two, 
provided that they're fitting properly. Um, Flint and Flow both have a 50 pound capacity for rear facing as long as the child is within 43 inches. So in terms of like how nitpicky are we with that 43 inches, we consider anything under 44 inches to be within the 43 inches. Once they've hit 44 inches, they're too tall. The other fit requirement for rear facing with Funf and Flow is that they have at least an inch of headrest above the top of their head. Um, both Funf and Flow come with an anti-rebound bar. For the Flow, it's optional but recommended. For the Funf, it's always required. Um, Funf tends to sit a little bit higher in the vehicle, particularly when it's rear facing in comparison to the flow. So that actually results in quite a significant difference in fit between the two when you're talking about how much space does it take up front to back. So Funf tends to, in most vehicles, be more compact front to back because it kind of nests differently with the front seat compared to the flow. Um, we do allow for Flow and Funf to touch the vehicle seat back of the seat in front, provided the vehicle manufacturer also allows it. So the infant thingy is an accessory that's sold separately. Um, it allows use of Funf for Flow from birth, so starting at five pounds, and it's rated up to 22 pounds. It can only be used with the Funt for a flow, so it's not approved for use with any other models of seats. And it is compatible with all past and present Funt and flow models. So when the Funt initially came out, it had five sets of harness slots. And then we added a sixth set of slots that was a lower set of slots. Um, so because of this, we actually do allow the harness to be above the tops of the child's shoulders when the lowest slots are being used if the infant thingy is in use. And for anybody who's bought a seat since 2015, they definitely have six sets of slots. But if someone has an original Funf, like say it's a 2013 or an early 2014 date of manufacture, they can still use an infant thingy. Um, one thing to kind of keep in mind is the head support. Um, it has attachment tabs that go through the shoulder harness slots themselves and kind of attach it to the car seat. The manual indicates the minimum three sets of harness slots that those tabs have to be inserted through, but we do allow the tabs to be put four sets of slots instead if that's needed to keep the child's head contained. So if the top of the infant's head is going above the top of the head support, we would want to have the head support raised up because we always want the child's head to be inside the head support. So a quick tip um, for the lock-offs, and this is something that is handy if you're doing virtual checks or video checks um, or in person as well. Um, you'll see in the rear-facing picture, the blue lock-offs are fully open in that photo. Something that's come up as a common misuse is families opening up just the top portion of the lock off and leaving the bottom portion closed. And what happens when the vehicle belt is routed in between those two portions rather than underneath both of those portions is the belt is not actually truly locked off. So where this will typically show up is you'll hear a family say something like, you know, I have my seat installed and it's really tight and then it seems loose after a few days. Um, or if they're having difficulties getting it tight, that can also be another clue because the lock-offs are actually going to take a little bit of extra slack out of the belt. Um, they are used with either latch or the vehicle belt. So it doesn't matter if you have a lap shoulder belt or a lap only belt, or you're doing a latch installation, we still want the lock-offs being used. The only time for the rear facing lock offs that you would not be using them is if you were installing using either a Ford or a Lincoln inflatable belt. So that's the only exception for the rear facing lock offs. Um, for the forward facing lock offs, I'll just get you to skip back to the slide if you can. Thank you. Um, you'll notice that there is kind of that longer opening where you can see that little bit of space and then there's a tab at the bottom of the lock off and that tab rotates down allowing you to open up the lock off and when you close it it goes back up. Now there's actually kind of a bump 
as you rotate it up. And sometimes what happens is families think they have closed the lock off, but it's only over the first bump and it's not all the way closed. So if you only get that that little tab up halfway, it's not actually locking off the belt and you'll find that the installation loosens. So making sure that tab is completely flush and closed all the way is really important. Um, for forward facing installations with Flint and Flow, you're going to be using the lock off on the retractor side only. So you're only using one lock off and it must be used, it is not optional. So quick tip for flow when you're installing it forward facing using the vehicle belt, um, let the base come forward a little bit from the seat bite. The top of the shell must contact the vehicle seat back or the vehicle headrest. Make sure the lap portion of the belt is contained in the red belt guides and then push down instead of back when tightening the belt. Um, the lock off is just a pre-crash positioner. So if you want to switch the belt to ALR mode, it is allowed, but it is not required. Um, so sometimes if a family's having difficulties getting a tight installation using the vehicle belt, it's because they have the base kind of pushed back and they're trying to get the entire back of the seat flush. And so just bringing it forward, like you see in this picture is enough to be able to allow them to get a tight fit. And crotch strap facts, um, there is a video here that we can play and it's just gonna quickly show you how to adjust the length. Um, the length is actually, the crotch strap is unique. Adjust the crotch strap back. to the longer length. Push the edge of the webbing into the crotch strap adjustment slot just by squishing the edge and then slide it forward and up and out. Select the longer length Take the metal plate at the bottom of the crotch strap and then slide it in and select the crotch strap slot that you need. If you're using the inner crotch strap slot, position it there and make sure that your red release button is facing out. So you will see that there's the inner position, which is the position closer to the child's back and the outer position. The, when you're installing rear facing, the vehicle belt runs in between the two positions or the latch belt runs in between the two positions. You do wanna make sure the crotch strap is through the same position in both the car seat and the seat cushion. If you were to misroute it, so say you have it in the inner position in the car seat and you put it through the outer position in the seat cushion, you're going to lose some length of the crotch strap and then it may, you might hear a parent say something like, my crotch strap seems really short. Um, the longer length may be used at any weight. Uh, we do want the crotch strap to be snug to the child to prevent slouching. In the event you have an older, larger rear facing child, then we do allow the outer position to be used still. And the Q-Tether, so the Q-Tether is now available. Um, it's an accessory that is sold separately for a flunk for a flow. It does not change the installation instructions at all. So it's something that you're still gonna follow all of the instructions in your flunk for a flow manual. And then if you want to use the Q-Tether, the Q-Tether gets a, um, installed afterwards. In the top picture, you can see what looks at, like a splitter plate that's sitting on top of the vehicle seat back. So that's what the Q tether is attaching to. And behind the vehicle seat back is where the actual tether hook is. So it's connecting to the dedicated tether anchor for the vehicle seating position that's being used. And the tether connector strap itself is adjustable in length. So you want to position the splitter plate so that it's sitting approximately where it is in that photo. What's most important is that it's not right in front of the child because you wouldn't want the seat to be able to rebound into that splitter plate. Um, we do recommend loosening the cue tether when removing the child from the seat and then tightening it after the child is buckled. That just makes it easier in terms of the loading and the unloading of the child. Um, and the goal of it is it's reducing downward rotation in a collision. So similar idea to a load leg, not exactly since it's webbing and webbing will kind of stretch a little bit, but similar idea. And our boosters, so we have Uber, Ollie and Ozzy. Um, Uber's weight limit has been raised up to 40 pounds. Um, so that's a change for those of you who are familiar with the Uber that happened 
I would have to look at the actual date, but all of the seats that are shifting right now have been at 40 pounds for a while. Um, it does have rigid latch, as do our other boosters. And the Uber is a little bit unique, and then it has a built-in recline, so it can be really great for those kids that sleep in the car. It also works really well for vehicles that have forward tilting headrests um, because we just require that part of the Uber be contacting either the vehicle seat back or the vehicle headrest. And then these are some of our accessories. These are all available on our website. So you can just visit cleckinc.com and you can get more details about the accessories there. So our entire customer service team at CLEC are CPSTs. Um, we're proud of our customer service team and you and the families you work with can expect best in class service when reaching out to us. This includes self-serve options for those evenings and weekends when you're working with a parent and need an answer now, or the option to refer a parent to set up a video support appointment to get their specific question answered. Our video support appointments rolled out in the spring and have been well received. While they're not able to replace a seat check, they are able to provide targeted answers to questions that may be easier to answer via video rather than over the phone or by email. In addition to our online support options, our customer service team is also available by phone, chat, and email. If you have a technical or vehicle fit related question, please feel free to reach out to me directly at cpst at cleckinc.com. Our entire team is here to assist you as you assist parents and aims to help make your job easier. We understand that the more comfortable and confident you feel answering questions about CLEC products, the smoother the process will be for you and the families you work with when you see a CLEC seat at a seat check. And this is Jen and Chris, the owners of CLEC and founders and their two kids. And then the last slide has my contact information. Um, we do have a technician discount available that is 20% off of regularly priced in stock items on our website. And you can just reach out to the CPST email if you'd like the details in regards to the discount. I think we have time for a couple of more questions. Sure, we'll try to squeeze a few more in there um, to see what they have. Um, there was a question again about using both the lower anchors and the seat belt. Um, for your convertible seats, do you have to use both the lower anchors and the seat belt at 35 pounds? So for this would be a foot specific question and it applies only to forward facing. So it is not required that you use both, but if you were not able to use both, then you would have to switch to using the vehicle belt at 35 pounds because that's the limit for the lower anchor only installation with a forward facing foot. Okay. Um, do your car seats, including the rear facing only seats, have a steel frame? So the Funf and the Flow and the Uber all do have steel reinforcement. Um, for the Ling, the base does have that in the base itself. Um, the carriers themselves do not have steel reinforcement because I don't think any parent wants to carry around a steel carrier with a newborn. <laughs> okay. That would be a real... A real heavy yeah <laughs> right <laughs> well i do want to let people know if we weren't able to ask your question or we, if we didn't ask your specific question please do email trudy um, because it is 259 and we need to wrap up so i'm going to turn it back over to stephanie thank All you right. carrie well again trudy thank you so very much and any any last words that you would like to share before we wrap it up I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here today and thank you to Safe Kids for hosting this.